So we've got a slight break from football and it gives us a chance to take a look at bigger conversations and we need to have a discussion about our next permanent manager. Ralph Rannick is here on an interim basis until the end of the season. Who is coming next? We all have our favourite candidates for who we want to come in and I've made I've made it clear that I want Eric Ten Hag. I've, st I've stood by that for a long time but what I'm going to do in this video is run through the latest update from David Ornstein on our pursuit and the fact that this process is now beginning and we're going to run through a short list of the four candidates named by Ornstein that Manchester United are going to be looking at. Please, if you would consider dropping a like on this video, it does help the channel. And if you do enjoy it, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into this article from David Ornstein and let's run through the short list of the candidates that United are looking at. And this is what David Ornstein has been saying this morning. He said that Manchester United are stepping up our search for a new manager and the four names on that list, Pochettino, Ten Hag, Luis Enrique and Julen Lopetegui, who I, I still don't know how to pronounce his name and I probably got it wrong again, but don't hate me for it. They're the four names on the list. So what I'm going to do is run through each of those four managers, looking at Ten Hag, what's he won? What formation does he play? Take a look at Ajax's latest game to see that formation in action. Run through all four of them. It's basically an informative video to help you understand who is on this list because it's time for us to start having this discussion. And there's nowhere else to start, really, apart from the main man and the top candidate, in my opinion, Eric Ten Hag, 51-year-old baldy from Holland. About time we got a baldy. But look, Ten Hag, if you're looking at what he's won, because I know for a lot of people, if, if, you, if, you, if we were to scroll back, sorry, and look at the uh, article from David Ornstein today, there's one thing that he did say in there that was quite important, and it was this. Scroll down here, and he said, among many factors that will enter into the equation, United are thought to be focusing on candidates who have experience of working at major European teams. So where does Eric Ten Hag have that experience? We all know exactly where he has that experience, at Ajax. He's won... The, this these are this is his um trophy cabinet as a manager two dutch league titles 2020 2021 and the 18 19 season of course where they got to the champions league semi final two dutch cups and one dutch super cup if you're looking at the formation he plays I'll run into that next but it's a 433 and you might see that as a repeating pattern among all these managers a little nod to what Ralph Rannick is doing at the moment we take a look at his managerial career it's just a bit informative. He started off at PSV as an assistant. I didn't start there. Twente. He went to Bayern. And then I think I think he worked underneath... Um, was it Guardiola there? He might have done. Uh, Utrecht to Ajax. That's been his career path to date. But it's at Ajax where Eric Ten Hag has really earned his stripes. And it's at Ajax where we've seen the best of him. And why we've all become... Not all of us, but most of us have become really excited about the idea of him at United. But that 4-3-3 formation that he uses... Big game of the weekend... Ajax beat PSV 2-1, and we're looking at the style there. It's 4-3-3 from Ajax. It's always been 4-3-3 at Ajax. 4-3-3 is so embedded in that football club. They'll never play another formation. It's amazing, really. And it's amazing their ability to keep regenerating as a football club with the players coming in, the players coming out. But yeah, for sure, for sure, he's been absolutely stuck with that 4-3-3, and, and that is what he plays. And for me, Ten Hag, if you're looking here, you've got Berghaus, you've got Alvarez, you've got Graven, Gravenberch in midfield. Maybe a front three of Tadic is still nailing it there. Brobby's come back. And then Anthony, who's a fantastic young player for sure. Eric Ten Hag, for me, ticks all the boxes of what Manchester United are going to want to do from now on. He's a manager who... <clears throat> he's done a lot of good at Ajax, but he's a manager who's on a massive upwards curve in his career. Whatever his next move is, whether that would be hypothetically to United or to Bayern or to Barcelona, it's to step up to the super. It's to step up to the top tier, to the top table. He's been dining at the kids' table. That's a bit unfair on Ajax. I'm not gonna say it's kids' table, but Ajax, for all their might, are are by comparison of the size of the club, nothing in comparison to United or to Bayern or to Real Madrid or Barca. That level. And Eric Ten Hag for me. It ticks the box of following on from Ralph Rennick. And I, for me, they're, they're, he is the outstanding candidate. But there's, there is an obvious comparison you're going to do straight away. And that's the other top candidate on that list. And that's Mauricio Pochettino. And we have been speaking about Poch and Manchester United for years and years and years now, haven't we? If we're looking at his trophy cabinet, it's pretty empty. He's won the French Cup and the French Super Cup with PSG. Obviously lost the league to, I think it was Lille. Uh, at the end of the season, I, can't, I think I can't remember what it was there, but anyway, they didn't win the league. Now, Poch, of course, we know plays the 4 3 3. If we're looking at his uh, managerial career, 
he's always in, I would say he's, he is impressive, man. I I do like Poch and I do like the work that he, especially the work he did at Spurs, turned them in from a a proper mid table obs, obscurity to if they backed him correctly, I think Spurs would have won that won the league that year. But they didn't back him. And then he went to PSG and he hasn't won the league so far with them. But what formation does he play there? This is PSG's game from the weekend. 4-0 win against Reim. Look, Verratti's getting two goals. My God, how much would I love Verratti? Uh, incredible. But 4-3-3. He's always used a 4-3-3 at Spurs as well. Not always, but it's his main formation. And yeah, the 4-3-3. Again, you might see the pattern emerging between these managers. So that's Poch and that's Ten Hag. And they are the two main candidates on the list. Now, I would say if you were if you were to compare where they are in their careers from Ten Hag to Poch, I would say Ten Ten Hag is the one that for me is on, is on is more on more of an upward curve of somebody who's ready. To, now, po, Poch has been linked with United. I think if Poch was going to come to United, it would have happened before Solskjaer. It might have happened instead of Mourinho. They were probably the two opportunities that I think Poch to United made sense. But I think now that Ten Hag makes more sense than United. Now, if you're looking at Ten Hag's con contract, he's there until 2023, so he won't be forcing a move away from Ajax. I don't think he would at all. But if you've seen the rhetoric and how he's speaking about his future, Ten Hag, up until I think it was just towards the end of the summer, dismissed everything, linking him with a move away. But now I think he's sort of allowing those conversations to be had. And I think, for me, Ten Hag still, absolutely. Maybe I'm a little bit blinded by this, but yeah, I think I am. I'm I'm properly focused on Ten Hag as a fan, and I hope United are too. And we shouldn't be going. This shouldn't this net shouldn't be cast wide. We shouldn't be throwing Zidane in there and Lopetegui and and then oh Luis Enrique and then Poch. It should be there should be three two or three names on that list, and that's it. And we get one of them. But there's four names on this list, and the top one is Ten Hag. The second one is Pochettino, and the third one is Julian Lopetegui, who is the current Sevilla manager now. For a lot of people, this might be a bit of a downgrade by comparison of Poch and Ten Hag. But let's have a little conversation about him. If you're looking at what he's won, you know, he, he has won. He, he's won the Europa League with Sevilla and had good success with the Spanish under-21s and under-19s team. And obviously went through to become the Spain manager. Now, that's where it all got a bit messy for him. I was saying that the live stream this morning. If you're looking at his career, it's a long old career. Started off at Vallecano, went to Madrid. Went to Madrid's B team, Spain's under 20s, under 19s, under 21s, to Porto. But then he went to Spain. Then he, yeah, I think he quit Spain before the World Cup and then went to Real Madrid and then got sacked after 14 games. That didn't do him any favours. But since he's gone back to Sevilla, he's done very, very well. Sevilla right now second in La Liga. And if we're taking a look at Sevilla's most recent result, a two-all draw, frustrating two-all draw actually, against Celta Vigo, what's the formation he's using? Ah, the 4-3-3. Again, the pattern repeats. And then we look at what Ragnick is doing at Manchester United. Maybe it was always the plan. Maybe it was always the plan here to go towards a 4-3-3. Maybe, I don't know. I don't personally think that was a plan. I think he wanted that 4 triple 2 to work, but it didn't work. But the 4-3-3 now, I think we can all see it suits Manchester United. And by looking at uh, Lopetegui and how he played, and I know you're all going to take the piss out of me in the comments, but I really don't know how to pronounce his name. Someone, please, someone in the comments, please tell me how to pronounce his name. Seriously, because I have no idea how to pronounce his name. Anyway, back over here. So he uses a 4-3-3. PSG uses a 4-3-3. And so do Ajax. Everybody's using a 4-3-3. So that's, that's, that's what I mean about continuity. It's my, one of my buzzwords here for whoever this new manager is. Because so many people wanted Conte, right, before he went Spurs. If we had gone to Conte, it would have been putting a handbrake on the club, a big U-turn, huge shift in style, in formation, in what players are right and what players are wrong. And for me, always, I think United under Solskjaer, we were working towards a 4-3-3. I'm, I'm convinced of it. And we never signed that defensive midfielder who could make it complete. And we all know that's still where the weakness is. But anyway, that's, that's a, a conversation for further down the line. But if we're looking here at Ajax with, with, with Ten Hag, we're looking at PSG with Poch, and we're looking at Sevilla with Lopetegui, 4-3-3, all of them. And there's another name on that list. And this one is the only one who... It raises... Luis Enrique, if, you're, if, if trophies are, are the measure of the manager that you want Manchester United to get, then by far and away, Luis Enrique is the outstanding candidate. World's best coach in 2014-15 with Barca. Won Champions League in that year. 
He won the Dublin that year. He's won two La Liga titles, three Spanish Cup titles, one Spanish Super Cup, one FIFA World Cup, one UEFA Super Cup. He was the dominant manager with that Barca team for two, three years. And he's gone on to be pretty... He's doing a good job now with Spain, taking them to the World Cup, the Winter World Cup. Now, Enrique, again, like the rest, a 4-3-3 is his mantra. A 4-3-3 is the formation and style that Luis Enrique likes to use. But with Luis Enrique, there comes a caveat, and that's the World Cup. So the World Cup happens, of course, it's the Winter World Cup this year in Qatar. That means if Luis Enrique was the manager we were going for, he wouldn't come into Manchester United until January 2023, right? So that means that what the, 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 ideal, the ideal situation is we get a manager in, in June, get them in, proper preseason, get them prepared, we move. Enrique, it would be like bringing in, a, it would be bringing in another manager mid-season and he would have to do that embedding. It, it, it just wouldn't be the best. I just, I just, it, it wouldn't be the best thing for Enrique. It wouldn't be the best thing for Manchester United for that to happen. We've seen that how long it's taken Ragnick to sort of find his feet. But they're the four candidates on the list from David Ornstein. If we go back over here and we read back up through the list, there you go. Manchester United are stepping up their search for that new manager. Pochettino, we spoke about Pochettino. Ten Hag, we spoke about Eric Ten Hag. Lopetegui, we spoke about him and Luis Enrique. They are the four candidates on the list, according to David Ornstein. And I want you to let me know in the comments, who is your ideal candidate? For me, there's, I make, yeah, it's Ten Hag. It has to be Ten Hag, in my opinion. I, can, I don't know. I, I don't know why it has to be Ten Hag. But, but I personally think if Poch was going to happen, it would have happened by now. It doesn't feel right now. It doesn't feel as right as Ten Hag does. It suits the the the. I can do. I can just in my in my mind this hypothetical situation. I can just see the Ragnik passing the reins on. I can see Ragnik working well with with Ten Hag. I can see the formation, the four three threes. There's I don't know. There's just there's a lot of synergy. I would say between Ten Hag and Ragnik. I would say there's a little bit less synergy uh, with Pot Poch is coming from that uh, that PSG situation where he's sort of like fighting. He's up against it. Maybe he's got experience of then dealing with a tough club situation. Maybe that will make him more equipped to working with the Manchester United board. And maybe that will be a slight against Derek Ten Hag because he's got the whole situation there with Overmars and Van der Sar. What's going to happen if he comes to United and he doesn't have everybody working with him? And it's a tougher situation. Would someone like Poch, who's got Premier League experience and experience of working with a tougher club, would that suit United better? Hey, that's what, you, that's what I want you to let me know in the comments below. But Manchester United, we're starting to step up our search for a new manager. In an ideal world, we probably get it announced for the end of the season. So this manager can come in at the start of June or at some point early in the summer, get as much time as possible with this squad, get himself ready for the next season. That's why I personally would rule Luis Enrique out. I don't think it, it helps Manchester United at all uh, to change uh, manager permanently again mid-season. I think with Ralph Rennick, it was a, it was a necessity because of what was going on with Solskjaer, but I'd rather see us do it in the summer with whoever's next. And for me, that has to be Ten Hag. But you let me know what you think in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, I hope you did. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and the information. I hope it did feel insightful. Please consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing to United People's TV if you're new. And if there's any more videos you'd like me to do during this break we've got from the football in the next couple of weeks, hit me up on Twitter. My DMs are always open at United People's TV. I read those and also my personal one at Sam Peoples underscore. But Ten Hag, Poch, Enrique, or Julian Lopetegui? Which one of those four are you choosing if that's the shortlist? Let me know in the comments below. Take it easy.